Earmarks are a financial cancer which will destroy the United States of America financially. They have to be ended for all districts and all representatives. Let me give you an example. Uh, there was a water resources bill that passed Congress recently. When it came out of the House, it had $14 billion. When it came out of the Senate, it had $15 billion, and we figured that they would compromise on 14 and a half. No, they compromised on $28 billion, doubling the size of it, and all of that was earmarks thrown into this district and that district and the other district, and furthermore, that passed over the veto of the president. So that tells you that the problem of earmarks is not a, it's more a democratic problem, but I guarantee you, ladies and gentlemen, Republicans are participating and sticking their noses in the trough. Now, how do we deal with it most effectively? Line item veto. One of the things I'm working on is an article on creating line item veto in the U.S. Constitution. Forty-seven governors have that. That means they can reach in there and they can take things out of the budget and throw them in the trash. The President of the United States should and can have the same authority. And that would end earmarks dead as a duck. Uh, if we can hold our applause again, I mean, obviously it's, uh, it's nice that but I'm going to ask for a Bruce next question. This is for all three of you. Where do you stand on this? It's all taxation and, and revenue spending originates in the House. Where do you stand on the fair tax and Social Security reform? Well, any initiative to improve the economic condition of people in Western North Carolina, if that includes the fair tax, then so be it. But the fair tax is a is, is certainly a fundamental change in the current system, and I think we have to be careful about how we address fundamental change, even though we all know that the current system isn't providing the kind of um, economic uh, prosperity that we want. We're overtaxed, we're overburdened with a tax code that is more pandering to special interests than it is supporting the people. Second part, Bruce, I'm sorry. Social Security reform. I also believe that if we don't address Social Security uh, and, and address it soon, um, the people of America will suffer and suffer greatly. And so I would be uh, in favor of a uh, relook at Social Security. You asked two killer questions in one sentence. Uh, just this week I was reading up on the details of the fair tax. And it so happens that two of my in-laws, and I won't name who they are, are retired from the Internal Revenue Service. And you might think that those people would resist any change in the code. But as one of them said at dinner earlier this week, uh, people ask me, why is the IRS doing these insane things? And he says, we're not doing it. Congress is doing it. We're just obligated to follow the law. The people at the IRS don't even like the IRS code. The simple fact is that it is the ultimate special interest deal. Uh, and businesses get lobbyists to get a clause somewhere that gives them a $100 million benefit that doesn't go to anybody else in the country. It might as well say, this company in Duluth, Minnesota is going to get this benefit, which would be unconstitutional. But that's not the way they do it. I am more and more persuaded that the fair tax is the right answer to replace all of the other taxes. Absolutely, throw them out. But you've got to throw them out at the same time, otherwise you'll have both taxes at the same time. Social Security reform, we've got to bite the bullet. There are three ways to deal with it. Higher taxes, which I know all of you resist. Uh, higher age for benefits uh, and adjusting the levels of benefits. But the longer we wait, the worse it gets. Yeah. So this is one of these things where you just got to step up and do it. Simple and transparent taxation is in everyone's interest. And the fair tax is one approach to that effort. In terms of Social Security reform, it, and uh, as an aside, uh, I like the concept, I like the idea, I don't think it will happen. Congress does not have the courage to do something that's sweeping, that bold, that efficient, and that transparent. Social Security reform, when Social Security was first started, it took roughly 40 people to support one person on Social Security. Today it takes three. In a few short years it will take two, which means every couple in America will be supporting someone on Social Security. That's a disaster waiting to happen. Again, and there's no question we need reform. Again, I don't think Congress has the courage to face the heat. It will be reformed by catastrophe.
it will be reformed by crisis at the last moment. That's wrong. Thank you, John. In the back, Robert. Yes, uh, with Russia uh, being recently re-emboldened by uh, oil money primarily to flex its muscles in the region, uh, what can or should the United States do um, to push back, or should we push back? No, not very much. And for this, you look at the demographics. Russia is dying as a country. Uh, it is way below the level of reproducing itself. It's going to be overrun by larger countries or would-be countries within itself. Um, and the nuclear weapons of Russia are under substantial control. We accomplished that more than 10 years ago. Uh, so unless they join with OPEC in cutting off oil supply to the United States because a serious, a real exchange of, of missiles and bombs breaks out in the Middle East and we are in the middle of World War III. In that case, Russia might side with OPEC, in which case we're against Russia. But right now, your question was, no, I don't think we should push back from Russia because they are so weak and getting weaker at this time. One of the greatest mistakes that I believe America makes is our tendency to become immersed in the affairs of other countries, uh, in affairs that we have very limited capacities to make a difference. At the same time, we ignore essential issues within our own borders. For America to be worrying a great deal about what Russia is doing, at the same time we have um, unkept borders, problems that were mentioned earlier, Social Security and other issues that are unresolved, is nonsense. Now, should we pay attention? Does Russia matter? Of course they do. But is that central to our future at this point? I see no indication that that's the case. America is the greatest country in the world. Our economic system beats every other country hands down. The world to promote democracy and American ideals, I think, is uh, not helpful. We need to do that and we need to do it on the basis of a comprehensive strategic plan that supports the vision of the American people for the future of this country. Come back there. Immigration and school choice. I, I appreciate Mr. Campbell illuminating a primary difference between himself and myself. If there was any indication that we were managing our affairs inside the country, we might have had leftover energy to invest in the world at large. I might be more comfortable with that. I see no such indication. I think it's tragic what we have done with this country on illegal immigration. I think we should all be ashamed, and I mean all of us, for the passivity and appeasement practices that we have accepted with illegal immigration. You cannot have borders, speaking of transparency, uh, that, that, that anybody is free to cross. You cannot have employment laws that are freely violated. You cannot have a, an underclass of this number of people coming to the country without disrupting our future. I believe we should strongly make an effort to, to contain our borders, and more importantly than anything, start addressing the, the folks who provide the money <coughs> and the jobs that create the flood, and that is the employers. I'll say one more thing. One of the greatest um, uh, personal frustrations I have with illegal immigration is it takes away the incentive to uplift and train and, and fairly pay our own people, and that's wrong.